The NFL news cycle has been busy this week ahead of the 2024 schedule reveal, which comes tomorrow. Today on the show, we're going over some of the headlines, including some new contracts at positions of note for Miami, a couple of new Miami Dolphins after rookie minicamp, and a refresher on who the Dolphins will play this upcoming season. You are Locked On Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami, welcome to another episode of Locked On Dolphins. It is your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins, co-host of Locked On NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts because it is your team every day. We don't just say it. We live a tip of the cap to our every dares. Uh, you can also find some written works from yours truly over on Substack at Touchdown Miami, where I do my long-form written content and deep dives. So lots of good content opportunities because there's lots of news, and we're going to have even more news later this week when the NFL schedule release comes out tomorrow night. So you can look forward to some schedule-specific type content in the next 24 to 36 hours here on Locked on Dolphins. But in the meantime, uh, we are reacting to a slew of news. Uh, we had a, a couple of Dolphins rookie minicamp tryouts that were signed to the 90-man roster. You have uh, a safety contract extension elsewhere in the league that is relevant for Javon Holland. You have a quarterback contract extension, which is Relevant for Tua Tonga Valoa. So those are the kinds of things that we're kind of going to be diving into here on today's episode of the show. Starting with Jared Goff. We did a whole show yesterday <laughs> about the interpretation of quarterback contract extensions and the trends of where the league is going and how numbers get reported versus how you can process it. And not all the numbers are in for Jared Goff's contract extension with the Detroit Lions yet, but it does paint the picture of what your expectation should be from a dollar's perspective. Jared Goff signed uh, yesterday, agreed to ter terms on a four-year, $212 million contract extension with the Detroit Lions. And he was already owed, this was the last year of his current deal, he was owed $32 million in cash. Uh, four years, 212 is an average of $53 million per season in new money, which as we went over yesterday, there's new money and then there's true AAV when you add in whatever cash is owed on however many remaining however many remaining years are left on a contract. So in total, five years of play for Jared Goff, just short of $250 million. So he's just under, I think it's like 48 and change, is the true AAV of Jared Goff's um, agreed to terms. Uh, and contract years left in Detroit until his next contract as, as a player who was the former number one overall pick and had one of the all-time bad starts to a career, plays in a Shanahan disciple offense, gets labeled as a system quarterback. Uh, they punt on him, move on. And uh, Jared Goff is a quarterback that I, I always enjoy because – there's something to the opportunity to grow and develop, even as you are uh, not a scrambler, right? Or not an inside or outside of structure player. Jared Goff is very much a traditional pocket passer. And as he's matured coming out of Cal, the college spread, and then being disastrously bad because he was drinking through a fire hose as a rookie, and then McVay simplifies so many things and puts him within the the bumpers of their system and they feel they're maxed out. And to their credit, they go get a, a more dynamic and electric player in Matt Stafford and they take another step forward. But Jared Goff has become one of the 12 best quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, and in part because he's been given time to cultivate experience and develop $53 million per season APY of new money is the second highest paid player in the history of the NFL. Jared Goff on his third contract. If that doesn't kind of give you a strike zone of where you can expect any potential quarterback contract extensions to land with Tua Tonga Valoa, 
I don't know what to tell you. Now, Jared Goff, they played in the NFC Championship game last year. That is absolutely true. Uh, so Jared Goff has been to a Super Bowl with a different team. Uh, the, those postseason runs exist there, and that obviously is a hole in the Dolphins, this current iteration of the Dolphins' resume. Um, so if you told me he came in below Jared Goff, I'd say, okay, you know, what's the guarantee money? Jared Goff got $170 million in guarantees, which is not a small figure either. But if you told me he checks in from an APY perspective slightly above Jared Goff, but lower in guaranteed dollars because of the injury questions, I'd believe that too. But it's just another bullet point to kind of notch and acknowledge that any new contracts for competent starting players, whether they are the cream de la creme or not, uh, it's going to be in a certain strike zone. And that's what happens when the salary cap goes up the degree in which it did this year. New contracts, uh, maybe larger raw dollar numbers, but they're a smaller percentage of the cap than those other players. And that is a whole other ideology of, of cap management that we really haven't gotten into. Uh, the other contract that was notable uh, was Antoine Winfield Jr., who signed a four-year, $84.1 million contract uh, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers yesterday, making him the highest paid defensive back in all of football. That's, this is an unprecedented contract. Uh, the Goff numbers, uh, I, th I guess maybe the APY surprised me a little bit, uh, but these numbers really surprised me. He's higher than he's Antoine Winfield Jr. is now higher paid than any corner in the history of football. Uh, $21 million per season. Uh, very well deserved. This is one of the most diverse and versatile weapons in all football in the back seven. But when you consider what Miami is facing with their own contract negotiations with Javon Holland, um, just like people had questions with the AJ Brown contract and the Devonta Smith contract and the Amon Ross St. Brown contract, did these contracts hurt Miami's opportunities to get a deal done with Javon Holland? Um, I, I think one thing that Antoine Winfield has going for him um, is he has made more plays. He has more accolades. Uh, he was a first-team All-Pro. He had an incredible year last year. He's credited with 122 combined tackles, six sacks, six tackles for loss, uh, four fumble recoveries, six forced fumbles, which was tied with Bradley Chubb for the league lead. Uh, three interceptions and an additional 12 passes defense. Javon Holland has been an outstanding player for the Miami Dolphins. He has not put together a season like that. And I think that is, for Miami, does it raise the ceiling of where APY and spending and safeties is? Yes. I think the safety market as a whole is still trending down when you consider uh, some of the guys that are still available in free agency. They didn't really get a lot of interest on the market. Uh, you saw Xavier McKinney, which I think is probably a more comparable contract uh, for Javon Holland to expect than what Antoine Winfield Jr. should expect. Um, so that kind of leaves Miami in a world where I believe McKinney got 16 and change per season. If you wanted to get something, it was four years, $67 million. If you wanted to get something done with Javon Holland, my expectation is you're in the 15 plus. I don't think you're in the 20 plus. And I don't think this spike based off of the season that Antoine Winfield Jr. just had, uh, when you consider Javon Holland coming off of a year in which he missed half the season, he's been good, but he still hasn't put together the complete season since probably his rookie year, which was not what Antoine Winfield Jr. just put on display. So uh, I don't think it's a big body blow for Miami with any potential contract negotiations with Javon Holland. Uh, I still think the more comparable ones are the ones like uh, what Xavier McKinney got, uh, who ironically is also represented by David Mulligetta, who just did the Antoine Winfield Jr. contract with Tampa Bay. David Mulgetta also just so happens to represent Javon Holland. So um, 
I think maybe that's the the thing that's most impending about getting something done um, is Mulligetta, who got the Christian Wilkins contract done with the Raiders. He's one of the best of the best, and he is very much here for maximizing his players' values, and that is something where Miami, they've been kind of stingy at times. And I think that's something where uh, if you're committed to some of these players being here, maybe you give a little bit now. I think it would probably be an appropriate thing to do. If you're committed to Javon Holland being here long-term, you should probably consider giving whatever your budget is, give on it a little bit and compromise. And don't be so um, steadfast in this is the value, this is the value. We're not paying more than the value. Because if you wait and Javon Holland does anything closely resembling what Antoine Winfield Jr. did this past season, and he hits the open market or he's not under contract, then I think that's where things kind of go go to crazy town. Uh, now, we had some new Miami Dolphins that were added uh, after rookie minicamp this past weekend. We will talk about them and rookie minicamp in general up next year on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. Stick with us. Going to the game should not be stressful. It's supposed to be fun, enjoyable, recreational. You love sport. Game time help makes it easy for you. Uh, and with the NFL schedule release coming up here this week, who knows, you're going to have an opportunity to figure out what games you want to go to at Hard Rock Stadium or elsewhere across the country when the Dolphins are playing on the road. Let Game Time be the app that makes it easy for you to get all of your favorite games and teams and see them in person. With last-minute tickets, you get flash deals, zone deals. It's easy to find and buy NFL tickets. And every kind of event in your area, you get the views from your seat at the venue, from your phone. With just a few taps, you can get tickets delivered directly to your phone. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms to apply. Again, create an account, and redeem code Locked On NFL. L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today for last minute tickets with the lowest prices guaranteed. So Miami added two from they they had two dozen rookies at rookie mini camp, and obviously they had all the rookies there from the draft class, uh, which is a, a duo of pass rushers and Chop Robinson and Muhammad Kamara. Jalen Wright got some good content of Jalen Wright. One of the, the practice opportunities or OTA opportunities, not technically practice. It is technically practice, but it's not uh, Patrick Paul looking like the largest human being on the face of the planet while simultaneously wearing the coolest freaking face mask I have ever seen in my career. <laughs> it's uh, he's looking like shredder out there uh, with his face mask, which is one he's bringing with him to oh, wait. Here's your breaking news. I was going to tease this earlier. I heard about this. Uh, the Dolphins will play week two, Thursday night football at home against the Buffalo Bills. That's your breaking news right here. The, the notification just came through uh, on social media. Uh, so week two, what, let, let me finish rookie minicamp stuff, and then we'll get into uh, the refresher uh, of the opponents and talk a little bit about Dolphins, Bills, week two, Thursday night football. Uh, September 12th at Hard Rock Stadium. So if you want to go, maybe game time's your ticket. Uh, the Dolphins adding two. Jason Maitre, uh, formerly of Wisconsin, uh, has been added uh, as a defensive back. And then an offensive lineman, uh, Ireland Brown from Rutgers. Uh, interesting pathway for Ireland Brown. Uh, was benched his final season as the starting center uh, in favor of Gus Zelinskis uh, for Rutgers, but was originally a defensive player and started at Boston College and then transfers to Rutgers and was on the defensive side of the ball for one year and then kicks over to the offensive line. Makes a lot of sense. There's an athleticism element of Ireland Brown that stands out. and. These are the kinds of guys that late switch to the other side of the ball, but the athleticism's there. If you want to get your hands on a guy, and he very clearly impressed somebody 
in the Dolphins building for them to add him after rookie minicamp. Um, it's a worthwhile lottery ticket to take. Oh, and there's some teams out there where their entire thought process with late draft picks. And this obviously wasn't a draft pick, but a late draft pick is, well, we want the uncoachables, right? We want the athleticism. Uh, we want guys, Howie Roseman mentioned this, and I know I, I mentioned this in passing the other week on the show, how he said all of our most successful day three picks have been guys that were super raw, but super gifted physically. And Ireland Brown, I think checks some of that kind of box and there's context within his career um, of being a defensive lineman and switching over to the offensive line and learning center uh, that gives you some perspective on why maybe this is a lottery ticket worth scratching off and, and getting a little bit of a closer look at. I certainly can't envision him making the Dolphins 53 with what their uh, – Offensive line depth chart looks like right now. I know we're concerned to some degree about the top five guys and what the combination is and how quality that is. Uh, but you look at the depth of it, and you probably already have 10 guys that are 53-man roster caliber players. I'd be willing to bet one player that does not make the Dolphins' offensive line and is cut in cutdowns gets claimed somewhere else. I, I'd probably, I, I would bet that right now for the beginning of September, and that's before they potentially add any of the names. So I don't think either one of these guys is kind of a shoe in on getting on the Dolphins 53 man roster and being ready for the start of the season and being a contributor this year. But if you told me a guy was a defensive lineman and switched and then got some playing time and then fell through the cracks because he got benched in favor of somebody else's final season at Rutgers and he popped for you at camp, I'd say, yeah, that, that's totally the kind of pathway for maybe finding a diamond in the rough. And we know based off of the past four or five years, uh, this team loves searching for acorns and turning over rocks to try to find uh, good players that they can get their hands on and develop. And they've had some success, some positions more than others, uh, but they have a nice track record of hitting on some of these kinds of players. So I'm interested to see a little bit more of Ireland Brown specifically. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about the Dolphin schedule. We've Confirmed have the first game that came through about five minutes ago on the show. So we'll talk about that and all that's right on the other side here on Locked on Dolphins. Stick with us. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads. Money lines, player props, and more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So, Dolphins Bills week two. Uh, this is confirmed by the Dolphins on social media as of now six minutes ago. And is it a bummer that you're getting Buffalo at home and having to play them in a night game? Yes. But. If you were looking for silver linings to catching Buffalo when you're catching them for the first game and catching them at home, which is obviously the last time you beat the Bills was at home. I think the last two times you beat the Bills was at home. Was the third most recent time we beat the Bills with JHI and Christmas Eve? <sighs> the good news about catching them here is it's a short week. Traditionally, teams at home on a short week for Thursday night have a significant advantage at playing at home. doesn't always work that way. It's not guaranteeing that the Dolphins are going to win the game. But if you told me you were going to catch Buffalo at home on a short week, and it's still going to be September, it's still going to be humid down here. It's just not going to be a, a one o'clock kickoff time. Um, that is a nice exchange, I think, to be home for that game. And I think also catching Buffalo with some new pieces in the secondary and a lot of new pieces in the skill group at wide receiver. Um, I think catching them in the first few weeks and catching them at home in the first few weeks and then catching them off uh, on a short week at home in the first few weeks is a nice combination of uh, independent variables that can maybe help you crack this case. Uh, and let's be honest, if you're going to get swept by the Bills again this year, then your aspirations automatically go to being a wild card team. And we all have higher hopes, hopes for the team than that. As far as the rest of the schedule, 
you of course have your uh, three divisional opponents that you play twice. So it's six games against the Bills, the Jets, and the Patriots combined. Uh, you also play the NFC West. You get Arizona at home at in Miami. You get uh, San Francisco at home in Miami. You have to go to Seattle, and you have to go to L.A. to play the Rams. Uh, so those are your opponents uh, on the NFC side of things. You would then have your bonus kind of floater NFC opponent, and that this year happens to be uh, the second place NFC North team, which is the Green Bay Packers. You must play that game at home as well. So that is six of your 17 games. Uh, then you have a division on the AFC side of things to play. Uh, you have the AFC South this year, Miami, or yeah, the AFC South. Miami plays Jacksonville at home. They play at Houston. They play at Indianapolis. And then they play Tennessee at home. And if you could give me one team to play week one, at home, give me Tennessee at one o'clock, and I want to beat the daylights out of that football team. A <laughs> uh, lot of new on the offensive line for them. A uh, lot of new skill players, new coaching staff. Um, would certainly like the opportunity at one o'clock. Make them wear their dark uniforms. Make them sweat for three and a half hours as compared, and get some revenge for that late season loss that Miami took that was so costly last year in a lost season for Tennessee. Uh, so if you could give me any team week one, I think I would want Tennessee at home. Personally. <laughs> uh, so that is the South. So that is now up to what, 15? And then you have the other two second place finishers in the AFC in the North and the West divisions. That gives you the Raiders who you get at home and the Browns who you have to play on the road. So those are the 17 games that Miami will have. We know one of them, Thursday Night Football at home week two. Um, if I were going for a scheduling fix, uh, and if you wanted to set yourself up for success, I guess either do the West, one of the West Coast trips in week one or start the first two weeks at home uh, knowing you're going to have the short week and not have to deal with any travel at all. I think might be a nice setup. Now, whether it works out that way or not, to be determined, uh, pretty 50-50 shot that the Thursday night football game in week two is the Dolphins' home opener for the season. So we'll find out. And I'm going to have a full wish list tomorrow of things that I am hoping for for the 2023-2024 schedule. And one of those things will include where I hope they are ultimately at. Um, Tennessee's not my real answer. Tennessee's my selfish answer. Now, we pro process of elimination, you can cross the Jets and the 49ers off for week one because uh, they're playing each other on Monday Night Football. So you'll get lots of more schedule reveals leading up to the full schedule reveal tomorrow. We will have our full wish list for kind of breaking out how the season plays itself out. You have all that to look forward to, so make sure you keep it locked in right here on Locked on Dolphins. It is your team every day. I'm out of here. Fins up.